Hello, everyone. This is the Dread Pirate. Arg. And, uh... And it's Oxentius. Oxentius. Uh -huh. We have... We have another game, and uh, and and Ox Ox, how are you today? How are you this this fine? I I'm tired. I've had um, a night where I stayed up till seven in the morning, um, between yeah, another game and um, uh, uh, yes, you, you have a game wrestling. up that I I need I need to w listen to as well, and that'll be wrestling. Good. And then I had um, I slept for like six hours, and I got up. Did some uh, more wrestling, and uh, then played some wrestling game, and then more wrestling. Came back here, my house, did a recording. It's in progress. It'll be up. Cool, cool. I just got back from the Kenny Chesney concert, and uh, that was kind of neat. And um, all the white people in the state of Florida came, and. Uh, you know, as white people do, and uh, and but you know it was kind of cool. I'm I'm not I'm not normally a um, a country guy, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, I thought you know I I, I I by the end of it I th I thought his tractor was sexy too. I just you know what can I say? It was it was pretty neat. Uh, and uh, I had an opportunity to do that. I'd also like to give a shout out to that chick with the goggles, uh, who uh, saw my my channel awesome video and told me what squall means because I have not known why the hero of Final Fantasy VII was named Squall for, like, 20 years now. I've always, like, that's a dumb name, and apparently it means wind, and I've learned something. So that's pretty cool. So I uh, I didn't know any, so that is... It, it just, it's, a, it's a, like, well, think about it. That's why they call him Leon in Kingdom Hearts, because it's, like, first of all, it makes people think, oh, it's the guy from Resident Evil. But also, it's, like, it's a normal-sounding name. You know, whereas Squall is just kind of, what, you know... Now Leonhard yeah. is a badass name. Leonhard, it's like, yeah, that's a fuck, that's a fucking great last name right there. It's like, you know, and he's got a lion on his sword, and it's like, it's, it's pretty badass, pretty badass. But um, yeah, so uh, it, it's game time, and uh, game time, it's game time, and you're you're a vampire, and you, last we checked, you cast a wish spell to help you figure out where the the stone went, and you saw an image of a um uh, uh a castle in a blasted heath. And, uh, and, and that's where it went. And, and then Fire Nipple distracted you because he, he made a poop in his pants. And you had to help him out with that. And, <laughs> and, and some time passed. And, um, and so what you notice know in the next couple of days is that, um, like, again, magic still is not working properly. And, um, and that's not good. And on top of that, what you're also noticing is that now clerics are starting to freak out, too. Because, um... The cler clerics have lost all spells. Um, they are unable to, when they pray to their gods, they are unable to receive any messages from them. It's, it's like the gods have all fallen sil silent. And there's a bit of a panic going on. Uh, people are kind of starting to freak out about this. And uh, But then, at the same time, a bunch of runners showed up, and then there was excited happy news that the demon baron has been conquered. Demon Baron and this tower were completely destroyed. Um, a, a army of Colin Grove, Holman Falls, Red Wolf, and um, and Wormwick all descended upon the Demon Baron's tower, led by um, a uh, and and you're not sure what this means, but it's called a uh, Super Happy Fun Time Laser Strike for Alpha Protocol. Apparently, what? Yeah, th that's a real thing, and it's in a newspaper and everything, and you're confused by it. But apparently some kind of strike team went in and killed the Demon Baron, or the High Priest of the Demon Baron, and it, everything, yay, it's awesome. And so people are kind of excited, but nervous. And they're starting to wonder, maybe the reason why magic's not working is, um, and the, the, the gods are, are, are silent, is uh, the revenge of Tiamat, perhaps. Um, so you're, uh, so that, that's, that's what's kind of happening. And after a while... Um, the runners are followed up by excited and happy soldiers who return to Colling Grove, and uh, and there there's much jubilation and celebration. But at the same time, uh, uh, Fire Nipples like tower is constantly being beleaguered by freaked out mages, freaked out um, clerics, and who are just kind of unsettled by everything. And also, you're getting a lot of just regular ordinary townsfolk who are just talking about how like the graveyards are like filling up with ghosts now, and uh, and you're not sure what to make of it. Uh, and finally, uh, finally, shortly after um, the soldiers arrive, uh, basically about 
a couple hours later, you're suddenly like only like two like like about four hours later, uh, you suddenly get a knock at the door, and Duke Ned, uh, the leader of the the town of Collingrove, has basically knocked your doors looking for Fire Nipple, and it's like uh, and he. And you know, Fire Nipple comes down and it's like, oh, hello, oh, Duke Ned, it's you, oh, and it's like he, he comes in and uh, you and your compatriots are there as well. Um, the animal and Lorala have just basically been living in the local inns and, and, and taverns for a while and just drinking, uh, but they finally are there for this and they come in. And it's like, ah, oh, it's a Fire Nipple. It's good. I got. Uh, I need to work on something. And it's like. Uh, uh, these some friends of yours, uh, new mages or something like that. This, this stout dwarf comes in, uh, with, uh, with, with a mohawk and sunglasses. And, uh, I'm, uh, Duke Ned. I'm, I'm the Duke here of Collin Grove. How are you? I've got balls of steel. Hello? Friend, uh, new friend. How are you? Uh, very good. Very good. Uh, so you're, you're, you guys are mages. You get, uh, working with Fire Nipple here. Or are you just, uh, shoveling the poop? Is that what y'all doing? Um, I've, I'm, I'm a, I'm a wizard. You're, oh, good, good. All right, you, yeah, so, um, anyway, we got some good news and some bad news. Uh, the demon bear got his ass kicked, so we, uh, we killed him, and that's great. And, um, you know, uh, but, uh, the problem is, it's like the moment we killed him, all of a sudden, magic started working screw. You got any answers to all that? Oh, great. Yeah. Killed a demon baron. Yeah, messed and... Messed up it, all the magic. Yeah, basically, it's like a lot of the wizards in, in the army are starting to complain to me that, like, certain spells don't work. Uh, the clerics are really freaking out, and that's not good because we had some injuries, and we couldn't... Um, they were able to heal them for a while, but then after a while, they couldn't get the spells back. And uh, they're claiming, like, they can't hit the gods anymore, and we're, we're, we're thinking Tiamat's got something to do with this shit. Um, I've, you know, I've also got where a lot of ghosts are walking around. Uh, anyway, I got to... If you're willing to help, I have something that might be a solution. We also uncovered something recently that uh, might might be a clue as to all this. Uh, there's, um, there, yeah. So, um, so on our way back, um, there's this old tomb opened up, uh, like a sandstorm kind of blew it away. It's a little to the north of here. It's about like uh, two three miles north of Collin Grove. Um, apparently, belonged to some kind of ancient king. Uh, called himself uh, Lord uh, Macapsa, and. Um, yeah, so basically it would appear that like shortly after we killed the demon baron, um, Mctops' tomb is opened up. We're thinking maybe uh, maybe something like in there might actually help us figure out what's going on with magic right now. Um, and uh, so if you're willing to investigate it, uh, I'm willing to make it worth your while. Uh, how many of you? Uh, animal tribes in. It's like well, there's uh, there's the two of us and and uh, Flutterbudge is here, and uh, also we befriended an angel recently. It's like oh oh good, perfect perfect. It's like yeah. Yeah, um, willing to, if you can, uh, if you go, you can go investigate this tomb, I'm willing to give you 500 each, 500 gold each, and, uh, if you find anything in there that can fix things, I'll give you 5,000 each. So, uh, so what, what do you say? You think that might help out? I want to roll Knowledge Arcana, see if the Demon Baron dying actually has the problem. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh. Did you send me porn? <laughs> you sent me porn. I'm I'm the one that says you sends you wacky shit, sir. Um, twenty eight. I rolled twenty eight. Twenty eight. Uh, it might. Some of it might. Good, some mm. of this is really this is really good Final Fantasy seven porn actually. Thank you very much. Um, so you're welcome. Uh, move, moving on. <laughs> and now it is recorded for all time. <laughs> so, um. You rolled a twenty. Um, it it might um it entirely might have something to do with that. It's like the, you, you know, powerful demons can do a lot of a lot of horrible things. You know um, if that dead, a dead. Say it again. A dead demon baron. Yeah, it, it's like it's entirely possible that this if this demon is as powerful as he says he on in his death throes, he might have cast something that basically could have. Uh, could have disrupted the world as we know it. Um, and it's entirely possible that whatever god that he reveres may have done something that's basically throwing the world off kilter as well. So. So, to revisit your terms, sir, you said 
500 gold just to go check it out, 5,000 if we find something, right? A piece? Or am I wrong? Am I not hearing uh, it? Yes, and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. That's basically it. I'm just really confused by your sudden English accent, honestly. That's not do, do, do dead talking. That's, that's me. Just <laughs> to, um, to, um, uh, so Flutterbunch is a cockney now? Is that it? So, um, since you have such a high price, um, what if I didn't have to go there? Well, uh, I mean, that's the plan. I mean, it's like you can, like, you know, if, if, you, if you agree to go, I'll give you 500 bucks, but you kind of have to go. Not any. So, 500 just to go, 5,000 if we find anything. Yes. And, um, it's a pretty good price. It's, um, um, in fact, I'll even pay you five thousand to send me with an escort. Uh, with a wagon. What, you you want a wagon? Yeah. Well, you want five thousands? Uh... Okay. Um, how much does a wagon cost in three point five? Do we do we know how much that costs? Um, no, but I'm not only paying for a wagon, but I'm paying. Make that make that an elite escort with a wagon, please. You want some soldiers to follow you. Elite soldiers. Not just your, your basic everyday folks. Your elite soldiers that don't ask questions and still get the job done. Well, uh still ask questions, I mean, a lot of my soldiers many. a lot of our soldiers are tired, you know. I mean that we just went through we just went through a war right now. But uh well if you're interested, um well the strike force uh is actually in town. There there there's some friends of mine and they uh They've been complaining about a lot of this stuff, too. I mean, they had a cleric amongst them. She can't ca- talk to Paylor anymore. She's kind of freaking out about that. Um, Dragon Lady's complaining. She can't talk to Bahamut anymore. She's really upset about that. Now, for some, so, reason, like, um, for some reason, the Elven Invoker or, doesn't seem to mind too much. He's like, seems really happy he can talk to Corellan. Sir, 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 sir. Yeah. You'll strike for. Yeah. Can you bring them here? Uh, well, I think they're in town. They got actually an estate here. Uh, we're actually going to have like a, a feast at my, uh, you know, at my castle, you know, basically just to celebrate the end of the war and all. I mean, if you want, you guys, you guys can come and talk to them there. So take me to them. Uh, okay. All right. Um, yeah. Um, actually, there's a, uh, yeah, just um, like uh, we're gonna we're gonna be there at like about seven tonight. If you want, just uh, show up then, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk. Okay. I'll show up then. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Good What's your name? Uh, oh. Tiny Mage. Oh, right. Um, I didn't introduce myself. And did you introduce yourself? I can't quite remember. I, I'm Duke Neg. And Duke. Uh, I'm Duke Ned. Hail to the king, baby. Well, Miss... I bow to you. My name is Flutter Budgets. Self-proclaimed master of sneaky wizardry. Halloween the room. Ruiner of day and vanquisher of your sex life. Also rogue, the mock one, and the monster. I got a lot of that. Nobody ruins my sex life, punk. A bit nice to meet you, I mean. You don't want to make a bet about that. Animal is face palming at your introduction. You want to make a bet about that, sir. Uh, my name's Crumb, but they call me the Animal. Uh, hi, I'm with Stumpy over there. And uh, this the, dra- the, the, the spider lady is Lorala. She has an allergy to him being stupid. And um... okay, he's more than four. He... What'd you say? Uh, you heard me. I, actually, I didn't hear you. I said, actually, he's not just a bore. He's a nuisance. What is this accent you have? This is fucking... He normally doesn't talk like this. I don't understand what's happening. There are wonderful, wonderful, high-ranking people in front of me. I have to be professional. 
So having a weird accent makes you sound professional. Yeah, you know, Duke, Duke Ned chimes in. So, yeah, you, you kind of sound like just a prick right now, honestly. But uh, but whatever, whatever. You think you can solve this thing? Uh, yeah, I'll introduce you to the Strike Force. Uh, should be should be cool. Um, yeah, just, just come by around seven o'clock tonight, and should be good to go. Uh, and uh, your your Planetar friend actually comes downstairs and 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 uh, introduces himself as well. It's, I'm Alistar the Planetar, and is like like oh, yeah. it's an angel. Duke, yes. Duke doesn't seem impressed. He seems just kind of like, you know, he he really wants a beer or something like that. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. He's, uh, nice, nice meeting uh, you all. Uh, nice meeting you all. Hope we can get this all resolved. I mean, I got, I got these fucking clerics just breathing down my neck. It's annoying the crap in me. Anyway, I'll see you at 7 and I'm going to get a beer. Have a good one. All right. Drink something. Beer. All right. He goes off and gets a beer. Um, and um, it's like... Four. Are you going to do anything till, till seven? Um, study. Study. What are you studying? Um, the, the stuff that's going on. Okay, your study is often interrupted by um by flutter but by by fire nipple pooping his pants, um, and uh. Around around uh, around six o'clock, I, I leave. Yeah, but uh, flutter budgets, flutter budget. I forgot. How do you do the mage hand thing again? How do you do it? How do you do it? I have I have poop that's floating in the air. It's it's on my hair. What do I do? What do I do? You you cast mage hand. Okay. Alistar comes to you and it's like I'll I'll help him. Just just go. I'll just... Cast mage hand. You I'll, use I'll, the mage I'll, I'll, I'll pick help up him. the poop. <laughs> and then you put the poop where it goes. Oh, I, I'm an angel. It's our job. I'll I'll just I'll help the old man. You you, you go meet the meet the strike force and you know figure, see if you can figure things out. So, all right. So uh, what are you gonna do? Um, I'm. Is it is it bright out? Ah, uh, the sun is just setting. I carry my parasol anyway. Carry your parasol and you're good to go. And you start heading to Duke Ned's castle. And yes. You head to the castle and a bunch of the soldiers there are eating and drinking and having merriment. And in um, and then you arrive, uh, you are escorted in to Duke Ned's uh, personal chamber. And uh, and you, you go there and he's like, ah, my friends, yes, come uh, eat. Uh, this is the strike force that, uh, that I want to introduce you. And you see five people that look very, very familiar to you. Um, in fact, they they turn and notice you and the animal immediately, and it's like, you two! And the the dragon lady stands up and starts drawing her sword again. Um, and uh, this is the same people you met in Felbrig, and we're trying to solve that murder. There's, there's a dragon lady, there's a, a, an elven invoker, there's a big dude with a flail... There's a blind half elf um, who appears to be a cleric, and then there's a man wearing all all black and is um, um, has like he has like an axe and a bow, but uh, yeah, it, it's them again. It's like what 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 are you doing here? Said Caitlin. I thought you. Uh, I came to study. Tentacle monster. Go ahead. I came to study with the local wizard and learned some stuff and found out that uh, this guy offered me a job, which I'm taking, and now I'm going to turn around and uh, and request help from y'all as escort and, and wagon bearers so that we can get there. And they come back and have no problem. Greg's like, yeah, I believe... Uh, I did I believe not realize I was about to ask some people who already uh, suspect me of being a terrible person, even though I'm not a terrible person. Well, uh, to be... Greg chimes in. Well, to be fair, um, you know, you, you, you apparently do work for some kind of horrible monster god thing. Um, we haven't actually seen you since then. We don't know what happened. We all, all kind of got... Those trumpeters blew their horns. We all got knocked unconscious for a minute, and you—you you two were just gone. 
Um, well, John times it. Yeah, you hit to eat us all. What, what's going on? Things happened. Saw some weird shit. Did some things. Yeah, I'm not cool with who his boss is. The animal chimes in. Um, did some other things. Found a stone. Um, you know, lots of fun. Lorala chim ch 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 chimes in and basically says, well, "You're one to judge him, high elf." And you know, hmm. and Doth is like, "You, you have a drow with you." I see. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of friends in a lot of different places yeah. who do a lot of good things. To help. And Caitlin, Caitlin's like, well, like, 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 uh, like, what's wrong with high elves? It's like she's a drow, Kathleen. They don't like us. It's like they don't. Oh, what a bitch. <laughs> it's... They... Okay. They're drow. They're the our drown. ancestral okay. enemies. Of course, they don't like like us. You know, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I keep forgetting. Um, Can you two just calm your tits and get along? Um, Lorala begins, like, you know, just kind of, like, hissing and baring her fangs. And... You want to go back home, not be on this, not be on this job? Animal's like, honey, please, can we not? Growl. Mm -hmm. Doth is like, anyway, anyway, um, well. And you, with the swords out, please put them away. Caitlyn actually... Adding. Actually, about that, upon uh, after kind of like talking, after like Dother kind of like reminds her what the drow are. Her, her swords are still out, but they're like like nonchalant. She's completely like <laughs> ignoring you at this point. Can you please just put your swords away? What? Uh, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, and she puts her swords back. Um, this is not a time for combat. This is a time for peace and celebration. Well, you know, you uh, you're a ten you're a vampire tentacle thing, like. And you're yes. up and like right. done anything. Be confused and like, what the hell is going on here? It's like the tentacle thing. But have I actually done any tentacle things? And for the record, the animal chimes in. I'm not cool with his boss either. Uh, we we went on a mission. It's, he, you know, he basically had been sent to another continent on the other side of the planet. And we went there and did what we were supposed to do there. But basically, it's like, I'm fully, we are fully dedicated. Me and Lorala, uh, excuse, excuse my, uh, my friend here uh, and her, yes. her coarseness. But basically, uh, she's completely and utterly dedicated. And we are completely dedicated to helping him be free of Natharla Hotep. And if that means we die or go insane, then that's it. Speaking he, of he which, helped I, us out in a way that's that I, I cannot even imagine. And I'm willing to get, we're willing to go that far. Something to announce, animal. Yes. On this you know, day. Sit down or like have like something to eat. You know, I've got, there's a lot of, there's a really nice spread on, of the food. On <laughs> this day. I will say it. He's not going to eat. He's going to fucking make an announcement. Wish All to right. be free. Of Neotharla Hotep. All right, where do we go? Where do we go to kick the guy's ass? Let's go do it. Actually, that was a test. He could actually. You hear nothing. You hear nothing. You don't sense his will or presence whatsoever. You are completely cut off from him. Um, I'm gonna go into. I'll, I'll be right back. I just have to go take care of. His... All right. Uh, oh, okay, you know, there's, there's, there's tons of food here. You know, we got, like, uh, roast pigs. Uh, like, uh, you know, we got, like, like roast dragon and phoenix. We got some good... Yeah, okay. And who's talking? Who's talking? Don't about? eat. Who's talking? Okay, we'll, we'll eat. Yeah. Who's talking? No, no. Uh, the Duke Ned. Uh, uh, I have too many NPCs. Duke, I'm sorry, but have you not heard our conversation thus far? I know, I'm really confused by all of it. And I'm, I'm just, like, you know... I'm also, I, I've had a little bit of wine, and I don't know, all the yelling is 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 hurting my head, and... You've hired... I kind of don't care, but... A very interesting being. It benefits you, sir, to gather information about me. Anyways, I'll be right back. I, uh, okay. 
you, nice. you start leaving like animals says he's gonna go masturbate i don't know and it's like I- i'll eat and you know so they sit down and start eating um, i'm uh, i'm actually going to go to a room where no one can see me um there's a bathroom cool i go to the bathroom you go to the bathroom there's a bathroom in a medieval castle but okay i go to a bathroom yeah um so and i'm going play the thief to, games uh, i'm gonna lock the door you lock the door and i'm going to try and turn into my tentacle monster what are you doing i'm gonna try and use my alternate form <laughs> you go into your tentacled alternate form okay and i turn back you turn back still do that i have no connection in starlet you, you very you are no longer his thrall but it was very helpful to have him that's how i can if you, you interpret it that way <laughs> but i can planes walk that way right now i can't planes walk mm-hmm Hmm. He's not good. Gods, from, from a certain, well, you know, I, I, it's not good from a certain point of view. From another point of view, it's great. It all depends. All right, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Let's see how we can get through this. Excuse me. You hear a dwarf knock on the door. Hurry up! I gotta pee! I I unlock the door and I turn into a park club. What? what? That's it. I'm just gonna go in the bushes. He starts peeing on a potted plant. <laughs> I unlock the door and I turn into a park club. I know. He's still peeing in the bushes. And then he re- and I ca- made pee that the door was open the entire... Door. What? Oh, it's son of a... <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know whether to keep to keep peeing or to like try to get in there as fast as he can and pee all over the floor. He's just he's he's completely stumped. He's completely stumped and doesn't know what to do. Um does he go into the bathroom? Uh roll a D hundred. Um twenty four. Uh, no, he just keeps peeing in the potted plants, and then some dwarven guards approach him and ask him to leave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Because if he had gone to the restroom, I would have de fart clouded, not banged on the door like, hurry up, and then fart clouded so that he would hurry up and get out and yeah. be no one there. Instead, he's being he's being accosted outside. Uh, that's... All right, so you're a fart cloud now. Um, I go back into the restroom, pee fart cloud, and then I go back to the, to the dining hall. Okay. Uh, all right. And you go back in. And, um, uh, your, your friends are eating, and, um, the animal and John appear to be getting on along really well. They're talking about things they've killed. And it's like, this guy shooting lasers from his eyes, I cut his head off. It was badass. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. One time I was fighting a water elemental, and I I, uh, I said, it, like, um, it, I just remembered it was my birthday. And when I hit him, it felt like I hit him harder. I was like, that, that's awesome. Um, meanwhile, um, you notice Lorala is just kind of glaring at the elves at the other end of the table. and But she she's eating and just kind of drinking and, you know. Um, and, uh, but you notice, like, one person in particular that's kind of quiet is, uh, Denora, who seems, she, she's sitting next to Greg, and seems very distraught. Um, I walk up to the people having conversation about what they've done. Yeah. And, um, I dramatically retell the story of piloting the, uh, the, the golem. Okay. You never pilot a golem. You piloted a mech. But do you well, I'm gonna, golem? I'm going to relate to them as a golem, calling it a golem so that they understand. Because I don't think they're going to understand what a mech is. That makes logical sense. Okay. And like the animal, okay, at this point, the animal and John have been drinking a little bit. And it's like, yeah, I was there for that. 
I was there for that. It was, it was pretty pretty awesome. It was pretty cool. He shot like like shot light in that at at this big skeletal bitch. And there were these these like cannons. Is these cannons like blasted her? It was it was really cool. It was really cool. I was pretty badass too. It was like we were, we were both there. We were both there. We was uh I was fighting this uh this evil drow um priestess lady. I was kicking her ass, if I do say so myself. And uh uh, Lorala like re remembers fondly and is like, eh. I had a good time stabbing her too, and then she ripped my heart out. So I was like, hey, you got better. Yes, I did. I did get better. I did get better. So. <laughs> and John's like, that's that's just that's great, man. That's, that's great. Uh, it, it, it was uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience for all of us to have. We John. learned a lot. We grew from things. John says. Once I actually uh, I, I crushed a pirate's head with 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 a flail. I've got so nice. this flail I can I can squish a man's head with it. I went insane from using this sword, and I pull up Nitharla Hope at Soul Edge. Mm hmm. That's got eye on it. Exactly. No. That's freaky. Like I said, Why do you have a sword that drives you insane. Yeah. Well, if you really want to go insane, you should talk to Coralyn. I'm also still trying to figure out this spell book, right? I pulled up the trap spell guard spell book. Um, the spell guards spell book? Uh, from. Uh -huh. oh, okay, that's way back from City of Spider Queen, right? Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. You haven't figured it out in a thousand years? I haven't really had the time. Okay. You pull out the book and a wave of nostalgia just washes all over. I remember when I got this. Oh, this is such a good read. <laughs> hmm. like, I haven't touched this in a long time. I'm gonna I'm gonna study it for a little bit. I'm gonna like study I, it. I, I don't remember what's in that. the spell book. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not gonna open it. It's trap, remember? Oh yeah, the the, the one with fire on it. Yes, and I don't want it to explode because I want to, uh, to get I want to disarm this spell. You're going to accidentally open the book and ruin this party. I I don't want to open the book. I want to I want to like your mind wanders over fondly remembering um remembering psych your your friend Psycho Helmet who opened the book and set himself on fire. <laughs> And, and and just you, you just smile, just smile, remembering the good old days. Oh, that guy. I wonder what happened to Psycho Helmet. As as do I, and and Porter needs to get his punk ass on this Discord. And um, so I'm gonna think about how uh, how I can um disarm the about the the, uh, the trap. On it. Okay. Guessing knowledge or. I don't even remember this item. Uh, go ahead. Twenty-five. Uh, you probably just dispel it. You should be good to go. But, and that wouldn't dispel the spells inside? You're very careful and dispel only the trap. Okay. Well, also, it's a spell book, so it's like the information is still there. If you're not going to, like... You're not gonna make the page of the okay. book go. I wasn't sure if dispelling the trap on the spell book. No, no, you know, you know for a fact that like if you dispel that you would dispel the trap, but the magic within would still be there. Okay, I um cast dispel magic. You cast on dispel magic the trap and uh, spell the trap so it's on the. So the book is no longer trapped. I open it. Head catches on fire. No, um. You're, uh, you, you, you it's open the book. Spelled. I throw it down on the table. I slam it open to the first page. I've done it. Don't just like, what just happened? Why, why, Wait, so long for this day. So long for this day. You hear something, you, you feel something small and tiny hit, hit the side, the side of your head. It doesn't hurt. Ooh. Something hits you, hits you in the side of the head. Who did that? Um, you don't hear anything. 
So what are you talking about? Something hits your head again. Doing that. What are you talking about? What's something the... is hitting the side of my head. Something hits your head again. You now realize it, it's tiny. It, it, they're, they're, it, it's spitballs. You hear giggling coming from a stairwell nearby. God damn it, Timmy! <laughs> Timmy, I, I, I eat with my dick, back. I swear. No, don't, says Kathleen. I put the book away. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's my son Timmy, you little bastard. Really now? Well, I stopped beating him with my dick, so that's why you know that's why he thinks he can get away with everything now. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. No, don't don't do that again. Don't no. I miss Paylor. <laughs> Starts crying. I don't know if I should punish him or if I should punish you now. It it's not. Uh, gotta teach him to behave somehow. Caitlin's like, it, it's not what it sounds like. It's just, I don't know. He's weird. Tell me, friend, <laughs> do you want to go for a flight? What do you say? I said, tell me, friend, do you want to go for a flight? Uh, what? <laughs> Are you going to? Are you attempting to romantically enchant Caitlyn with a magic carpet ride, a la Aladdin and Jasmine? Are, are you asking me? The world is shining, asking, shimmering, splendid. You asking tell, me as a tell character? me, princess? Now, when did you last let your heart decide? Is that what's going to happen here? No. Um. Well, something. She a little more extravagant by your, your statement of, of, of well, let's go for a flight. Let's go for a flight. What'd you say? Oh, it's more extravagant than a magic carpet. Let's go for a flight. Come on. You can Let me show you something. Yes. Of course I can. I'm a wizard. Uh Dother then looks per look, like raises an eyebrow at you, and then Caitlin's like, I'm seeing someone. No, 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 no. It's not like that. Trust me. Well, what is it like? I mean, you know. Oh, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun whole new have... world. <laughs> a new fantastic point of view. No one to tell us no or where to go or say we're only dreaming. Sorry. You were thinking it. So was I. I drag him outside. Dra dragging, dragging Dother. Yes. That, what? What? What are you doing? What? The, look, the, put my boyfriend down. Um. Why are you dragging so me? Um. You'll find out. Um. Caitlyn starts following you and drawing her sword. What do you mean? F you'll find out. Oh no 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 no! I'm not gonna hurt him. Trust me. If you want to ride along too, you can. Could you stop dragging me? Why are you? Why? What are you trying to do? We get outside, right? You're outside. It is nightfall, by the way. It is nightfall? Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Can I throw him in the air and then cast Form of the Dragon 3 to turn into a huge black dragon and catch him on my back and take off? You would have to make a grapple check first. And... You would probably force me to initiate combat with these two characters. So, combat maneuver, right? Yeah, you have a surprise round at this point. So, um, how does a 36 fare? You grab him. What are you doing? Roll initiative. Um, 18. Uh, Dother has a seven. Uh, Caitlyn has a 22. Mm. 
What are you really? Let go of my boyfriend. What? Put him down. She. She's gonna try to talk you down. If you do anything else, she's gonna attack. Oh, okay. Interesting. How close is she? She's right behind you. Oh, fun. Is it my turn? Yes, it is your turn. Um There are there are dwarven guards nearby uh from, from Colin Grove who are just who are looking at you. Some of them are drunk, and some of them are just like, I don't want to deal with this right now, and just are ignoring <laughs> <laughs> This is great. So, um, if I just cast Form of the Dragon free and turn myself into a dragon, will he just automatically be on my back by the end of the transition? How big would you be? I would be a huge... Um, you'd probably... Well, you're holding him. So you'd yeah. probably... He would probably be, like, in your tiny hands... And you would probably push, like, Kathleen backwards a bit. Or to the side. Okay, I want to do it. Okay, you turn into a big black dragon, and, um... And then I take off with him in my hand. Uh, well, turning into a dragon took a move action. So it's... You can't fly away just yet. Um... Hold up, right. hold up. Hold up, hold up. Um... Casting time, one standard action. And then the transformation you're saying takes the... the, the okay, yeah, I see. All right, cool. <sighs> okay. Oh, I gave him Soul Knife. All right. I, I don't know why you do this to me, dude. I don't, I don't know why you, I don't understand things. Um, he was beating his son with a dick. So. No, this is Dother. That was Duke Ned who said that. Oh, I have the wrong person. Y yes, you do. Yes, you do. And even if you're... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm legitimately just giving this guy a fancy ride. And, um... I just want to show him the horizon. Be like, hey, cool, look what I can do. You should work with... Okay, well, they don't really understand that, and I'm going to assume you got drunk somehow, even though you're a fucking vampire. Um... And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I accidentally so, bit the animal after he'd been. You're also game. forcing me to use Dother's like abilities, which means I have to use fourth edition abilities. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so while struggling, he his hands glow from underneath, and he hits you with cold fire pillar, and a cold fire pillar erupts underneath you. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, you're taking, wait a minute. <sighs> thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you for making me f fucking look this shit up. <laughs> My hate is palpable. Oh, that's right. I have to make a will. First off, um, you're welcome. Second you, you, off, you, you um, need to, okay, you need to make a reflex save. You need to make a reflex save. Um. Hmm. What a 39. Do it. Are right, you make a 39? Okay. That's fine. Um. Oh, good, I lost it. Right, there it is. Cold fire pillar. All right. Um, let's see. 22. So I'm a, I'm, I have really large... Do you have resistance to cold or fire? Um, I have cold pin and uh, fire none. You have cold what? Pin. 
Cold resistance 10 and fire and yes, resistance sir. to fire. No resistance to fire. Okay, well then that co okay, so you're about to take um 24 damage. Two of that damage is cold and fire. So what I'm going to do is basically say you're taking one point of it, so you're only taking 23, uh, which is just fire damage. Uh, and yeah, this 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 bizarre blue fire that feels kind of cold and hot at the same time erupts underneath you, and you take 23 damage. 23? Yes. Uh, the guards now suddenly notice there's a giant dragon nearby and start drawing their weapons, and will probably attack on, your, on their next turn. And uh, it's Kathleen's move. No idea why you try to do this. I thought I was getting the guy that beat his child his dick. Okay, for the record, no. he does beat his child with his dick, but he's not actually molesting him. I don't. It's just a thing. It's a joke. Lord Cat made one time. And it's just, it's like, yeah, it's, it, it's somehow okay in that household. And then, and then I somehow grabbed the wrong guy to do this with. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. And then I realized it, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, you kind of fucked up. Well, and, this is taken for a nice, peaceful flight then. Okay, yeah, so she, she has a short sword and a rapier out, and she's going to attack you with, um, with them both. And it's going to be... Yeah, um, the rapier is gonna be like offhand, so it's like um, hit hit you four times. What's your AC? Um, uh, uh, what'd you roll? <laughs> What's your AC? Fifty nine. Fifty nine. Okay, first one misses. Uh, second one misses. Third one misses. Fourth one misses. Okay, so she. She attacks you with her um, her short sword and her rapier, and it all clangs against your back and does nothing. And uh, it's your move. Um. Well, I've got eleven minutes at the dragon, so do I still have him like in my grasp? Yes. I um. I set him on my back gently, and then I take off. Okay, so you're flying through the air now. Yes. How how far is, just, far is your fly speed? Um. Let me. I would just like to point out this is a new and exciting way that you completely derailed my game. Fly 120 feet. All right, you are in the air 120 feet away. Well, um, I say, I'm sorry. I realize I have grabbed the wrong person. Therefore, we are going for a leisurely flight and not a frightening flight. Okay, Dother is now has a staff pointed at you. And he says, uh, put me down, please. You, you don't like the horizon. I don't like being abducted out of nowhere and being put on a dragon's back and being flown around. I've been mean, flitting around on a dragon's back. Why the hell did you do this? What the fuck? Okay, so how, your flight speed is 120 feet? Yes. Okay. Um, Caitlyn is going to... Yeah, so instead of attacking you, he tried talking to you. <laughs> um, Caitlyn, I need to know what her flight speed is. Kate, Kate. She she's flying after you like bring my boyfriend back asshole and she's but she's she has a she's she can only has a fly speed of eighty feet so she's she's forty feet behind you but she's chasing after the two of you it is your move so uh, you want down right yeah you know this is one of those things that makes it hard for for us to trust you 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 realize that. And you heal five. You you feel heal five hit points of damage. So why don't you take this opportunity to let me show you that you can trust me? Well, why don't you land and then we'll talk about that? 
get to an area we can talk all in. Just, just give me like another, I don't know, 800. Oh. All right, just, just land, damn it. You realize you're flying around as a black dragon in a city of people that are scared of black dragons, right? I go 800 feet outside the city and land. Okay, you only move 120 feet, so you're still flying. So, Caitlyn is cursing at you <laughs> and trying to catch caught up, and it's harder because she's 40 feet slower than you. Yes. Could you slow down? I'll talk to her. <laughs> okay. Fuck you! Slows down. Fucking bubble talking to Kathleen. Kathleen, calm down. Hey, he's like, what? No! The fuck? This guy? He's just... What, what the fuck? The I know, I know. Just just get on his back. What the... Dother! It's just... Just calm down. I don't know. He's a little impulsive. I, I don't think he meant to send you on. She lands... What the hell's wrong with you? And why are you a dragon now? Why are you the bad kind of dragon? Well, I mean, it was the first dragon that popped up in my mind. I'm sorry. I'll go gold next time. How does that make you feel? Slightly better. Fire. Slightly better. How long you suck as a dragon? Um, I can end it, but I got up to pretty much eleven minutes. All right, you. I can end it after they get off my back. All right, you you wind up outside the city. Cool. And 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 you know, instinct as it or and by and by instinct, I mean the DM throwing you a bone suggests you might want to fly like a little ways away from the city, so that way. The guards don't immediately run up and start killing the black dragon that's that suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Well, I was planning on getting us outside of this. I'll actually take you to oh yes, my vessel. It's close by. Oh, you're gonna go. You're gonna. So this you're gonna that's a mile away. It's okay. I've got teleport. Mm. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. So <laughs> you you land, right? Yes. They get off my back. I turn back into flutter budgets. Okay. okay. What the fuck was that? Why did Ah? I I think Kathleen. I I'm not quite sure. I understand why you did this either. I must be honest. Well. I grabbed the wrong guy, first off. Second off, what, now what, I... What do you mean, wrong guy? Who were you Who were you planning on turning into a dragon to and, like, putting on your back? Some take a guy, son with a dick, on a scary flight. He's talking about Duke Ned. It's like... Uh, and then tell him not to do that. Look, it's weird, but he's not... I don't know. Duke Ned actually is a good... Uh, Dad, like Dothar, like starts looking at Kathleen, trying to see, feel like he's having trouble finishing that sentence. And it's like look, he doesn't molest them or anything. It's just, it's weird. I don't know. It's a dwarf thing. They just, I don't know. Timmy was, we were there, and Timmy was making fun of him one day, and then he was like, "Don't." Let Anyways, me by the time that I had turned into the dragon, um, by the time I realized I was already a dragon. Wait a minute. So I figured. Are I you drunk? You little tippy. Roll the ro yeah, roll the hundred. Um, 21. No, no, you have no excuse. <laughs> I mean, you've had something to drink, but you feel fine because it, no, you, you're just, you're just you and stupid. Okay, but I have, I have something to show you. You might like it. You might be scared, but you might like it. All right. To be honest, I shouldn't even be showing you what, what would this be? Uh, it's right over that away, just inside the woods, and it is a vessel that I use to travel. You, you uh, realize I, like, so don't trust you right now. I mean, like, this is, like, everything you've done is you just, you fucking grab a person and turn into a fucking dragon, and it's just, like, like, you can't do that. I mean, I get enough shit for walking around like a dragon, and you just... Here, you know what? You know what? Here's my spell book. What? That doesn't fucking do anything. What is that supposed to mean? What is that supposed if to I lose mean? This, if I lose this, I can't prepare spells every day. Therefore, I can't cast spells anymore. I'm trusting you with my spellbook. 
I'm trusting you with my power. <sighs> I'll take a spell book. That's what it does. Thought it takes your Thank you. And it's like I, I I must say though, it doesn't it does feel like you're a little impulsive right now. And it's like given what we've known of you already, it's yeah. I can understand that. I can understand that. I have my antics. Please please kill you. I understand. I I uh mm. Maybe if you would think before you like act. Yeah, yeah, you think before you act, you dumbass. I never I always think before you act like Kathleen. Glass house, stones. Shut up, Dother. She and she suddenly punches him in the dick. He's like, ah, my God, my God. And he goes down to the ground crushing his tongues. Would you like you, to You you she just pointed you have to stop being so impulsive, damn it. Walk it off, Dother. God crazy dragon bitch. Fuck God Let's walk this way. Okay. So you start walking a mile back to the ship? Well, no, we're, like, within, like, radius of... I flew out it's a, a mile, mile away. I cast teleport. Roll the 100. I know exactly where it is, though. I know. Roll the 100. To see if they're actually going to trust me to go. No, just roll the 100. Uh, 51. Okay, you teleport to your ship. And um, and they're with you, and cool. <sighs> what's that? My vessel. Vessel. Like, Tactical terms, it's spaceship, but it's really for high speed travel over land, through the air, over water. It doesn't matter. Dother looks at it as like a spaceship. It's a spell jammer ship. Spell jammer ship. Yeah, a spell jammer ship. It's used by the Githyanki Seven Hundred Mind Flayers. They use it to tra transverse the astral plane. Uh, no, it does. It stays on this plane. Well, it can. Can it fly? It can fly. You say? Very fast. I can get to the city in less than a second. Oh. Well, that's very interesting. Yes. So Cat Catleen put crosses her arms. It's like, okay, so you took us out all, all this way out here, turned into a dragon, grabbed my boyfriend, also you could show us your awesome new car. Is that it? Well, well, I, I mean... Her, like, what's a car? Technically, technically by it's time... A metaphor, lines, Dothar, it's a metaphor, Dothar. It's a fucking metaphor. Technically, I shouldn't be showing anyone in your timeline this, but you might... Our timeline. I've done time travel. Okay. It's Her time really travel is very, very dangerous. It is. I've actually heard... Uh, uh, I think last time I spoke to Fire Nibble, I heard there was a cave nearby that basically had something to do with time travel. A time travel cave? Yes, um, there's, I mean, well, getting anything out of fire nipples difficult, but, um, yeah, I was, uh... Been worse the past him. week, I complete. I was talking to him before we actually head out uh, to the Demon Barrett's castle, and apparently there's a cave somewhere where there actually is some kind of portal that actually can send someone back in time. Okay, mm. it's like, <laughs> wouldn't it be really, really great if I threw Bomar in there? And it's like, no, can't we leave Bomar alone? It's like the... Then we never have to deal with him again. And it's like, yes, and then we'd never be able to get great deals on bread again. He burned down our ship. And, and trust me, on our fucking if, ship. If he does anything that changes the past, it could mean you're gone, or you're gone, or this whole place is a desert. Yes, Caitlin, I, I, I leave Bomar alone. I think time travel is extraordinarily dangerous. I'm kind of. I'm actually kind of more worried about the fact that I've heard that you did it. I mean, no offense. I mean, um, what what happened when you went back in time? I tried to save a behind the tree. You see the big blue thing again that just comes up, comes out, winks at you, and goes away. <laughs> I tried, friend. but on that plane of existence, I ended up turning the whole thing into another world 
or the other world was to live, that ended up destroying the world. And so I had to go back in time and reverse it. And, um, and I don't mess. I guess I've heard that's the danger of time travel. So basically one can, you can damage things so badly that in order to make it right, you have to go even further back. It's, you know, and for all we know, even our own time, you know, people may have moved back in time and changed things before we, this entire conflict with the demon Baron might've been some kind of time yes. travel mess to begin with. Do you have a name for it here? What time travel? Uh, the effects of time travel. The effects of time travel? Some people, when you alter the past, some people, are, in some worlds, they call it uh, butterfly effect. Some call it the spider effect. Some call it the feather fall effect. I actually haven't heard it, heard of these terms before. This is actually very, very fascinating. And then Kayleen's now leaning at a tree snoring. Occasionally... Um, to go back like, in time. Nerd! If, Gay! If, we're, if you were to go back in time and alter Guy anything suck. in the past, the entire fate of the world could change off of you literally just cutting down a tree or bumping into somebody or talking to somebody. I've I've heard something about this in my readings as well. That's that's interesting. Um, I've heard yeah, so much as like even going back in time and stepping on a butterfly. You know, if that butterfly were to mate and produce offspring, you would basically be killing generations and upon generations of of butterflies and destroying, you know, changing the world in in, in, in phenomenal and irreparable ways. You're a bunch of nerds. Like okay, Kathleen. God. This is why some. People in some worlds call it the butterfly effect. Caitlin slumps down, annoyed that you're continuing to have this conversation, and it's like, and, and he he talks to you at, at some length about about time travel, and he's he, he seems very very fascinated now. Now, as far as this particular vessel, um, I'm yes, I, sure I'm like this I isn't a spell jammer ship yet. It, you just call it a spaceship. Yes. sir. Yes, it moves in space. It just moves very, very fast through the air. Yes. This is fascinating. Is it powered by magic by, by any chance? Uh, it actually has engine. An engine. Okay. Well, I mean, is it like a magically powered engine? How is it able to do all this? No, it's mechanically. It's completely not magical. Exactly. That's fascinating. That's very cool. Who who built this for you? Where did you where did you get this? I, uh, the, the people who owned it last attacked us. So, in self defense, you killed. We killed. Them. And, uh, I learned how to fly this thing and literally did. Well, who are these people? Where did they, where, where are they from? I don't know much about them. Well, were they humans, dwarves, elves, Durgar, gnomes, or. Um,. Dungeon Master, um, remind me of the name. They are the Skrull. But I can, from what I can gather in their text readings, they are the Skrull. Skrulls. I've never heard of Skrulls before. Neither have I. Uh, bluff check. I didn't think I'd actually ever heard of them. Yes, you have. You you want a knowledge check. So you actually are aware, were aware of their species. Oh, okay. So um, I make another knowledge. Instead of saying that, I make a knowledge check to uh, recall information about them. You're not going to uh, tell him you don't, you've never heard of them before? I'm not. I'm not. Since I, if, if I actually know of them, then you I'm already know. Them. They're, they're interstellar species of alien shapeshifters. Uh, they had a vast empire that was destroyed. Um, from what you've I mean, if you want to make a knowledge check to know who ate it or what ate it, you can. But you, all you know, all, all you know is that they had a vast empire that's on the decline, partially due to the fact that they're constantly at war with another race called the Kree, and some kind of giant alien monster ate their home world. So, but that's uh, okay. So to put the short story to you, um, it's an alien race, um, which means they come from the Aliens. sky. 
Yes. Okay. Not of this world. Like they're species, from another plane, then. They're from another planet. Not another plane. Planets. Yeah. You mean like if you just keep going? If you just so keep going straight plane. up, what do you think? You, if you just kept going straight up and you didn't, didn't stop right. I I don't know. I don't think anybody's ever flown that high. Be in something called outer space. People have been there. What is this outer space? Um, there's no air. It's really cold. And um, if of the planet that we are on, um, it is round, spherical, like a ball. Uh-huh. Not flat, like some believe. Um, I, I, I'm well, I'm well versed that the, the, um, the, the planet is round or that the, okay. the, the material plane is round, but, um, uh, what's your, what's your now, you just... thing is essentially the astral plane. It's this vast gulf between worlds and whatnot. Uh, like it, uh, it like the, it sounds at least similar to the astral plane. It's like, similar. Like they're like it's... large chunks of land that like, uh, like Pandemona. Uh, has large chunks of land just kind of floating around in it, and, and you can, if you if you know how to transverse it, you can just move from one space to the other. You're saying that surrounding the prime material plane, there's there's like a vast gulf between other this, this and other worlds. Well, um, yes, I've done a I've I've done a little bit of both, where I've traveled between planes and I've traveled in space, and um, traveling in space is a uh, Different than traveling through planes. Okay. Traveling through this, planes. You this vessel all the way up, basically. Yes, I can take the vessel up there. Okay. I can take this vessel. I can. This is the most this boring vessel. conversation I've ever heard two nerds have in my life. Oh my god. Okay. Anyways, um, alien your Ferrari is uh, nice. Can we go back and, um, and finish eating? Um, Well, I've got a question for you, Miss Dragon Lady. Okay. How about we go really high to see if we can contact Bahamut? Uh, I... Wait, what? <laughs> well, you've got a strong connection with Bahamut, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah... And that has been broken. You're saying you can actually use this thing to get me to Bahamut? Not guaranteeing it's worth the try. Okay. So what wizards do. We th- we do things, an experiment, and we come up with calculations. And then we see if that's actually... If it's uh, worth trying to see what would happen then do it. And that's how we formulate news. And all right, all right, shut up, shut up, nerd. Anyway, so you're okay. Your plan is we're going to go into the space stuff. We're going to go yes. up and I'll try to see if I can get a hold of Bob. Yes. Okay, I'm in. All right, cool. Please board the vessel. How do you get in? Oh. Pushes the button, drops the ramp. Ship opens up. Here we go. Walk upstairs. Now you go inside. You're on the bridge. Closes hatch. Okay. Damn it. Damn it. I was really hoping you'd just fly up in the space with the hatch open and you don't die. You want to still breathe when we get up there? No. No. Pretty sure you want to still breathe when we go up there. Yeah, I, I want you to. Let, uh, shut up. You close the door. Fine. I go to the pilot seat. I start running the, the turn on sequences and get it all started. And boom, we're ready to go. Okay. Okay. Um, way up. Would you? Just going straight up. Roll D100. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. What'd you roll? I rolled a three. 
Yay! What to kill you with? What to kill you with? You're going to put me against an intergalactic army. Uh, you see 1,000 spaceships that blow you up. No, um, I, I, have to, I have to take my time to figure out what to kill you with. Hold on. Um, all right. Oh, this will be interesting. Oh, this will be very interesting. Okay, I need to... But given what we're doing here, I need to pull something out of my ass, so... Uh, all right. Uh, I need a book. Okay. Well, uh, well, let's 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 start simply enough, though. Um, you you fly all the way up, and the uh, the planet rapidly recedes um, underneath you, um, and then suddenly you are you are out, and indeed the planet is spherical, and you're out in the majesty of space and and stars and planets you discover there are multiple planets actually in this solar system that uh, that have a have a unique um that kind of kind of uniquely color this world and and dother and Kathleen, even Kathleen, in her cynical non-appreciative sort of way is just absolutely in awe of the, in awe of the beauty that is surrounding them and it's like you know it's like, i gotta hand it to you little vampire man this is pretty cool it's pretty cool okay i'm gonna give this a shot she crunches down she goes into a meditative stance, and she goes into it for about 10 to 15 minutes. And after 10 to 15 minutes, she grimaces, and she comes out of it, and it's like, no, I can't, I can't hear him at all. I don't get it. I don't, don't there, I don't know what happened to him. I, I, I don't know if he's okay. Maybe, maybe that bitch Tiamat did something to him. I, I just don't know. Okay, and, well, let's get back down to the surface. But before you do that, you all of a sudden a alarm starts going off on your um, on your computer screen, uh, 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 uh. and um, you once again hear that attractive drow, uh, not drow, uh, scroll woman's voice, um, and um, you cannot um, you you cannot understand it like audibly, but you can read it. It's actually coming up in, in written form as well. Uh, do you wish to look at it? What is what is it saying? Proximity alert. Proximity alert. Over and over again. Proximity alert. Um, and you notice there is an object moving towards you. Oh. Oh. I'm I'm gonna try and move out of the way of this object. Well, we're gonna have to roll initiative first, so. Oh no. Initiative. Mm. Okay. Oh, you're so fucking lucky. <laughs> so maybe not. Lucky. Maybe not. Maybe not. I've well, got yeah, maybe not. I'm actually looking at the weapons on this thing. <laughs> uh, mm. Mm. Healer. <laughs> Healer. Oh, I have to actually get this guy's character sheet out. Um, Healer. What? 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 What happened? My, initi my initiative. You not one. 25. You got a 25? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to get a get a notepad up. Okay. You do the bad guy first. What? Uh oh. Okay. Am I breaking the game? Possibly. Oh no. Am I doing something wrong by showing them this? Probably. Oh no. I'll do their initiative as well. Like they can do anything. Um like they can fight. Oh Dother's got an eight. He's gonna be instrumental in this. And Kathleen. Kathleen's got a decent one. She got a twenty.
Okay, it's actually your go. Ooh. Anyway, you see, yeah, yeah. You, you, you see there's an object approaching, and um, you can actually see it visually. It's a spaceship. Hey, what, what, what is it? It is a spaceship. Uh, spaceship uh, it looks like it's oglom. It's kind of brownish in, in, in construction. Um, and it does have weapons on it. And it's moving in your direction. I um I zoom back down to the earth to the land of the planet we were on. Okay. Um how high is it from the surface of the earth to orbit? Like are you talking like scientifically speaking? Yes. Um speed again. Hold up. You can, um, mile, you can go eight miles in a in instantaneously. Yeah. yeah. Low Earth orbit orbits up from 160 to 2,000 kilometers, or 140 miles. Yeah, let's do miles because because I know you you move at eight miles, so. So um. Low Earth orbit is achieved just 100. Miles. Miles, okay, so you are just, you are moving towards the planet, and it, you have only moved eight miles down. You have 92 miles to go. Now, how many okay. feet are in a mile again? How many feet are in a mile? Yes. 5,200. 5,200, okay. Uh, 5,200. The, the ship is following you, and it begins hailing you. Now it's not; it doesn't appear to be able to move as fast as you, but it is basically um, giving chase. It is giving chase, and it is uh, it is um, it, it's it, not attacking. Uh, yeah, it's giving chase, not attacking, and it is hailing you. Uh, how do I respond to that? Um, well, you can you can do something on your turn, I suppose. Um, Caitlyn. I don't know how to respond to Kate, receiving Caitlyn a hail. Caitlyn is not sure what to do because Caitlyn and Dothar really can't do anything without. Um, just between you and me, Caitlyn can actually survive the vacuum of space because she is basically a demigod at this point. But Dothar cannot, so um, she and also she I can really. Uh, you I can, can also survive the vacuum of space, but basically she doesn't really understand a whole lot about. She doesn't know whether she'd kill you or not, so she's. And I don't think she didn't realize know what to do. So she's basically like, "What? Like, wait, is that another spaceship? What's happening?" They, they start asking you questions, and that's going to be their move. Um, so it is your move now. Um, okay. Did I catch anything in the manual about responding to, to uh, receiving signals? Um, actually, you notice on the screen very much, very easily. There's like very simple. It's almost like receiving a phone call. It's like there's there's a written word answer or deny. And it's like, you know, um, um, I click answer. Okay. You answer, you suddenly see the interior on, on the, on the view screen. You suddenly see the interior of another vessel and standing before you is a very, very large man. Um, like just incredibly, just like huge, almost like a giant. Um, and he's very, very muscular and he appears to be wearing some kind of skin tight gold armor that appears to be armored. And there's a large metal he uh, helmet on his head. And it's like, hey, where you, where you scrolls going? What's going on here? Uh, you Look, back to not where y'all going? Not scroll. You're not a scroll. What you doing in the scroll ships? I, 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 I commandeered it from them. You commandeered my scroll buddies. You commandeered my scroll buddies, man. We were gonna get the Avengers with them. Oh well, oh, well, I'm gonna have to kick your ass. You're messing with the bulldozer now, buddy. I, I I killed the scrolls that were piloting the you ship. You killed my scroll friends? You killed my scroll friends? Oh, that's it. I'm coming for you, buddy. If I can just remember how to use these weapons. To be fair, to be fair it was in self-defense, and we did nothing. Well, of course. They're probably trying to rob you. What you should have done is just given all your money, so I could have gotten a cut of that. What kind of money you use on that there gay planet of yours? Um, it's... Uh, I, I, Excuse I don't me, know. sir. Um, oh, okay, so you, Dothar. All right, so you killed 
this man's friends, but you're basically saying that your friends are bandits. Hey, what, what's you using all them big words right there? Yeah, what about it? Yeah. I'm sorry. But, Do we have like I'm going to rob you. Shut your ship down. I'm coming aboard. The bulldozer's coming, buddy. The bulldozer. I don't know. What's your intelligence score? Do you ask him what his intelligence score is? Yes. Intelligence score. You asking me my SATs? My SATs is none of your business. None of your business. 200 of the SATs. I was smart. I was super smart. Yeah. I got an I got a 56 on the ASVAB, asshole. He, he does use the word ASVAB. 56 on the ASVAB, and they made yeah. you a captain. They made they made me a sergeant, just just so you know. And I'm coming over. Bring it. Oh, you're a sergeant, so you're not even the one I need to be talking to right now. Put me on. He line opens captain. fire on you. Um. So okay, this is gonna hurt. Uh, okay. Two fire-linked heavy neutron guns. Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> Fortunately, he has penalties, so that's a good thing. Um, here's your ship. Your ship has an AC of 40. And your pilot. So, first attack is a crit. Uh, so, and actually, I, sh I should roll twice. All right, so he fires at you. Uh, one of the two uh, heavy neutron guns slams into your ship. Um, and... I'm going to see what I hit you with first before we do anything. Uh, and then... Oh! Oh my god. Oh my god. This thing has nuclear missiles on it. And... Taylor, what can it right do in one turn? What? What can it do in one turn? It can it can fire you with two fire-linked heavy neutron guns and two nuclear missiles and the needle driver. I don't know what the needle driver is, but it is 8 die 12 damage. Uh, so it hit you with one of the heavy neutron guns. It's now going to fire its nuclear missiles at you. Firing nuclear missiles. Okay, they miss. They miss. All right, it misses the at you with the nuclear missiles. Of course, it's aiming at the planet, so that's probably not good. Um, and the needle driver. The needle driver. Oh no! What's I done? Uh, you blown up the Earth again. Um, so, but one of the fire linked guns hits you, and okay, fifteen die eight. I'm taking 15 die 8 damage. 15 die 8 damage of a total of 66. And I'm trying to remember what your damage reduction is. Your damage reduction is pretty cool, if I recall. Um, yeah, all right. Um, yeah, you got blasted by laser laser bat blast of this thing. Um, I guess it's got a hardness score, a bunch of shit. I think it's like 50, so you're probably going to take 16 damage. But uh, let me double check. Eight, five energy attacks. Um, 20, 28. And then there's the hardness score. What's the hardness score? Hardness 20. Yeah, so um, 48. So 66 minus 48. Yeah, your ship takes 18 damage. Oh, wow. Yeah. nothing. Uh, let's see. And, yeah. Um, I think you're at 120. Yeah, you're at 120. Your, your max is 138. So it, it blasts you and damages the whole of your ship. Um, and... Um, yeah, uh, I don't think your friends can do anything without killing Dother. <laughs> and like, but Catelyn's like, we gotta stop that guy. Uh, I, I, let me, I'm just gonna double check to see what she can do. <laughs> um, oh. Okay, yeah, you hailed and responded to him, right? I just thought of something else. Okay. Uh Yeah, before um I almost forgot. 
uh, before uh, before she her turn goes, um, he fires again with everything. What? He, he fires again. What? He, because he can do that. Because you talking to him was was your turn. Um, on his turn, he can haste himself. Unless uh, haste takes a full round action, right? No, he's already hasted. He was, no, he wasn't hasted because he didn't know you were. He thought you were the scrolls initially. So okay, he hasted and he and he, he um then he opened fire. So actually, okay, next oh, next so time he's, gonna be, he's gonna be able to fire at you twice. Um. So uh. Okay. Um. All right. Caitlyn looks at you and says, "Okay, we're gonna go over there and kick his ass." Um. Try to disable the ship and don't kill us. And it's like, Delta's like, what do you mean we're going to go over there? She grabs him and teleports away. You suddenly see that she's behind him on the view screen. And it's like, Dother looks at her in complete and utter horror. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and she's like, come on, Blondie, start using your powers. And, like, meanwhile, the bulldozer just, like, slowly starts turning. And, uh, and Dother needs to cast spells at him. And, uh, and once again, I use a fucking 4th edition fucking character. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. What? Dother's an invoker, and there's, like, nothing in 3.5 that I can no, it's equivalent no. to what it is. is. Is she fucking insane? What do you mean? Yes, she is. I thought you figured this out by now. Let's go over there and disable his ship. Oh, come on! She doesn't. She doesn't bring you with him. Be, uh, with him, she just teleports herself. And oh, great! Her. They've got my spell book. They do have your spell book. Oh, great! They have my spell book. Uh huh. Okay. Uh. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I'm going to try it. Um, all right, Dother pulls out that, that weird purple staff he's got, points it at Bulldozer who's slowly turning away, and casts Angelic Blades, and these big energy blades of, you know, cosmic energy just fly out and start stabbing into um, Bulldozer. And he's basically got to make a... He's got I've got to roll his wisdom versus Bulldozer's reflex. I blame you for this somehow. Uh, it's plus five, so that's a 22 versus Bulldozer's Reflex Save. And Bulldozer's Reflex Save is a 19. Um, oh, he makes it. He takes full damage. Uh, so 2 day 6 plus Wisdom Modifier. Um, okay, Slow Counteracts Haste, right? Um, yes, it does. Um, yeah. Okay. Plus five, thirteen. All right. Um, so he he blasts the bulldozer with something, and bulldozer takes uh, thirteen damage. And uh, he he also he like he suddenly slows down a bit. So basically, he's no longer hasted. Um, and thirteen. All right. Okay. Um, of course, I'm wondering like what he has like defense wise. Hang on. Got dense flesh. I want to say I just gave that like a bonus to my AC. Yeah, I did. Um, got my helmet. Oh, that's what. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Um, oh, he has damage reduction. Okay, so it's 13 damage. Ah, uh, 13 damage with plus six, and that was a magical attack. So yeah, it goes right through. He takes 13 damage. Ah, but wait. Um. He has spell resistance and it's magic. So, how you do you? A caster level check is your. It's like a d twenty plus your caster level, right? Um. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Never mind. 
he fires uh, he fires the energy blast at uh, Bulldozer. It strikes his body, and then just gonna, it seems to do nothing to him. He is still hasted. Bulldozer has a spell resistance. Okay, your go. What do you do? So, so there in the uh, in the spaceship. Yes. Um, they've got my spell. Yep. Can't. And, like, go to recuperate. What's that? The ship to heal and, you know, think oh, about Oh, that's it. right. Um, yeah, before I forget. Um, <laughs> nothing. Your ship I heals do. 21 damage. Nothing that I would act to do. Situation. Done right now. Nothing you would um, sound right? How far away? How far away is their ship? Uh, it is... The, its tactical speed is 3,000 feet. So it is 2,000 feet behind you. Two thousand. Yeah. Are, are you saying it, it moved like? Because I moved eight miles. It moved less than a mile. Yeah, it was following you. Yeah, you're you're you know, but it was uh. Wait. Wait a miles. Okay, wait. Okay. Eight miles is forty-two. 000. All right, no, okay, yeah. So it's, it's it's less than eight miles behind you. Oh no! Oh no! No no! No no! Oh. Of course, it's gaining. Oh, no. Yeah, at this point, it's actually seven miles. Can I get close to its ship? What that? Is it possible to get close enough to their ship that they can't? That it can't do what? That it will not be able to attack me. You can try. Your only real weapon on your ship are grapplers. You have to get in close in order to do that. I know. I'm going to... That very and get up close to attack them. What'd you do? I'm going to attempt to get up close to them and attack them. Okay, you're gonna attack. You're gonna attack his ship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think I can really do. Got to get my spell book back somehow. Okay. Uh, what's your base attack? My base attack bonus. Ten. Your base attack bonus is ten. Mine is plus ten base attack bonus. All right, and you have two attacks, right? Yeah, it's gonna be plus ten plus five. All right, so for the purposes of ship to ship combat, um, you have a plus. You have you have plus forty eight because you have a thirty eight from your grappler, um, plus ten. So if you move and attack, all you could do is attack once this turn, but you could attack with a plus forty eight. All I can do is attack with one of the grapplers. Yeah. I do that. Okay. Um, uh, and you said it was 48? You plus 48, yes. Make your attack. Fifty-nine. Um, you hit. Um, did you crit? You just rolled a 59, no. right? Okay. Let me know if you crit. All right, so um, you, you you fly back to the other ship and slam on it, punching it as hard as you can with one of the grapplers, and ding! You you bump the ship and it moves back, and the ship has taken no damage. Taken no damage. It has taken no damage. So it's immune to melee attack. Maybe. Of course, your grapplers deal about twenty damage. What what's the damage on the grapplers? Grapplers deal 20 damage, yeah. 
20 damage flat? They deal 20 damage. Okay. Straight 20 damage. Is the is the screen still on? Oh yeah. And like you notice them all shaking on board the ship. He looks back at you. Um he would blow you hey, with weapons. I don't have I, I can't hurt them this way. We can move faster than them a lot. Should probably come back on board. Guys. Oh, guys. Back over there, they're getting crushed by the bulldozer. Oh. Bulldozers move. Okay. Uh, what can I do to you? What can I do to your friends? Uh, ooh. I could charge. I could charge that pansy mansy little dwarf, that, that, that little, um, little, uh, elf that, uh, fired on me. It's a tasty, tasty AC of twelve, and uh, I have a plus sixty when I when I uh, when I do my unarmed strike. So uh, yeah, bulldozer takes a look at um, at Dother and it's like <laughs> boom, and he by his namesake charges him and rams Dother as hard as hard as he can, and uh, he gets a seventy eight, and that hits Dother. So Dother takes. Um, 66 damage. Pull! Oh! Dother is slammed in the gut and knocked to the ground. He is at 154. Kathleen's like, Dother! Uh, and of course, he is hasted, so then he's going to make another... Un he, uh, after, after ramming him, he's going to make another unarmed st uh, strike and punch him in the chest. 67, he hits. He deals 48 damage this time. Dother is at 106. Uh, yeah, that's almost half his health. So I should probably roll massive damage, but I don't do that. So, okay. so he rams okay. Dother, okay. Paw, paw, and then punches him. Dother coughs up blood. Uh, Kathleen's pissed. And I have an idea. Yeah, hopefully it comes around and things bad happen. Okay. Uh, Kathleen is going to breathe her misty breath at, uh, uh, at, uh, fuckwad over here. Um, at Bulldozer. Uh, so she breathes this misty breath on him, 30 feet. Uh, Six I eight damage turns enemies uh, hit to miss for one round. Reflex save DC ten half hit dice plus Constitution modifier uh, twenty eight for half. Okay. Um. All right. He needs to make a reflex save. He needs to make a twenty eight. Okay, 19 plus 16. Uh, he makes it. So he tries to uh, dodge out of the way of the Misty Breath, but he gets hit by part of it, and it burns the fuck out of him. And he starts turning into mist. Where's Kathleen's character sheet? He starts turning into a mist? Yeah, her Misty Breath turns her enemies into mist for one round. Okay, and did it? Two, three, four, five, six. All right. Um. He but he saved for half, so twenty-two. Oh my god! Yeah. So it's reduced to eleven damage, and he's got. I think he's got bonuses and stuff. It's probably well. It's magical though, so it's probably still gonna hurt him. Um. Oh, that's right. He heals too. I almost forgot. <laughs> uh, oh, it doesn't matter because like that last attack didn't do anything to him. Um, oh, 
Yeah, and it's not a spell. It's it's a breath weapon, so it goes through a spell resistance. But uh, yeah, it, all right, yeah. So that, that actually hurt him. Um, all right, she she blasts him and burns him a little bit, and all of a sudden he starts turning into mist. So, what the the hell? Uh, Dother does not have any teleport. Get the fuck out of Dodd spells. Um, so Dother stands up. Ugh. Ugh, fuck me. And is going to cast something. God damn it. Looking at the fucking character sheet and it just fucking disappears. Too many things. You have far too. Hmm. You have far too many things. I, well, yeah, he's a fucking fourth edition character. It's fucking annoying as shit. All right. I'm not sure what else to do. So he's going to be using his. I think this is his brilliant beacon. Yeah, this is he, okay. Yeah, he he busts out his brilliant beacon. He's brilliant beacon. He blasts um, uh, homie over here. And five sets of 14 versus Will. Uh, he makes it, so. So he's going to only take half of this. And actually, let me just make let me just make the spellcraft check to begin with. Um, he does not. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> he, he he blasts him with brilliant beacon, and it does absolutely like he he stands up, makes a five foot step, blasts him face first with brilliant beacon, and just, it blasts him and like does nothing to him. And well, of course, actually, he's in misty form anyway, so it probably wouldn't do anything anyway because he's incorporeal right now. Um. So he, he blasts him with Brilliant Beacon and it doesn't really do anything. Um, okay, uh, it's your move. It's my move? Yes. His name's Bulldozer, right? Yes. Mm. I cast Wish. Okay. I wish... That the creature calling itself Bulldozer and its companions were dead. Roll a d100. Um, I have an 81. 81, okay. Favorite number. All right. Um... I also need you to make a spellcraft check. Roll a d20, adding your... your spellcraft. Ca your caster level. Wait. You mean spellcaster check? Yeah. So my caster level is seven. Yeah, just your caster level. Thirty. Thirty? Okay. Um good, I don't need to use this other thing I've got. Alright, so you, you cast your wish spell and suddenly his body glows and uh, his heart seizes up and then all of a sudden he growls and flexes and poof, it shatters. It does nothing to him. Okay. What? So it does absolutely it does not work. You sense you cast it, you sense it worked, but it basically it wasn't strong enough to get through his spell resistance. Oh. Yeah, your total was three. That's not high enough to beat his resistance. His companions pass on? Is there is you feel one? like it tried to kill... it. You sense that you almost killed three other people, but because it didn't work on him, it didn't work at all. Actually, um, that's a good point. Hold on. Let me, let me do a D100. You sense you've murdered three completely different people that you've never heard, you've never met before. Okay. So if he finds out they're dead, he's going to be super pissed. 
If you survive this encounter, I'll tell you who you killed. <laughs> <laughs> or if I die, you'll tell me who I killed too. Because of course. Be over. Um. All right. Um. I feel bad about pummeling um Dother so much. Not really, but um. Oh. Oh. First of all. Um. All right. So. Um. Oh wait. Yeah. I'm. I'm misty right now. Um. Yeah. So no one would actually see this. But um, he's missed, and he tries to punch Kathleen, but can't because he's missed. And uh, and then suddenly he starts to solidify, but it doesn't matter because he's missed. <laughs> he can't do anything. So uh, it's Kathleen's move. All right. Kathleen's got another breath weapon she can use. Uh, Kathleen is going to bust out her disintegration breath. Um. Uh, yeah. All right, so if he fails his fortitude save, like, he just disintegrates, right? If I'm using disintegrate? Yes? Um, disintegrate. All right, okay. Well, actually, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you, you told her to get to get the fuck out of Dodge, right? And Dother almost died. Okay, yeah, she grabs Dother and teleports back to the ship. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Thank Dother's you. move is to groan in pain. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, your move. <laughs> My move? Yes. I fly back down to the planet's surface. Okay, you are once again eight miles away from him. He gives chase and opens fire on you. And uh, actually, yeah. So a mile is, a th is 5,000 miles. He is a little less than seven miles behind you. And um, he opened... Um, he... Yeah. He, opened fi he opens fires once with all the weapons he had before. So, two more Firelink Neutron guns. Alright. Um, the second one once again hits. Uh, two nuclear missiles are once again fired down at you. Uh, first one misses, uh, and the second one misses. Uh, and then the Needle Driver is fired. And that misses as well. But the Neutron guns do hit. So, one more, once again, 15 die 8. Okay, um, so uh, the, 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 the heavy neutral gun blasts you. Boom! Your ship takes two damage. Oh, yay. But it did, yeah, it, 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 did, it did scuff the hull. All right, you were at 136. I'm going to clean that later. Yes. Um, Kate leans like, get us the fuck out of here. And... Um, and Dother's like, yeah, please. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's your go. Okay. Um, I'd like to fly towards the planet again. Okay. Uh, as the uh, ship recovers itself. So, okay, the ship does heal. The ship is back to 138. Uh, I'm not even going to roll the damage, the damage control because it doesn't matter. Um, Okay, so he was seven miles away. He is now fifteen miles away. Uh, what's the range of this fucking thing? Length, length. Oh, oh, six thousand feet. Okay. Um, All right, um, he's out of range, uh, but he's still following you. Cool, he's out of range. Yeah, you are 15 miles away from him now. Um, he speeds up. He's now 14 miles away from you. and uh, But he cannot shoot you at this time. Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to keep flying back towards the Earth. Flying back towards the Earth, okay. Um... All right, you're 23 miles away. Uh, roll a d100. Um, 54. 54. Okay, uh, you appear to have lost him. Congratulations, you survived an encounter with Bulldozer. Now, um, just so you know, 
Your wish spell successfully murdered the rest of the members of the Wrecking Crew. You have murdered um, Pile Driver, the Wrecker, and I think um, I Iron Ball is his friend's name. Actually, I can find it in his description. Uh, yeah, you you murdered three other supervillains that you've never heard of before in your life. Cool. Cool. Let's see, I did yeah. something cool. The the wrecker, um, the wrecker, pile driver, and like uh, like Thunderball. I think his name's Thunderball. Have just spontaneously in the middle of a bank heist back on Earth, just had a sudden fatal heart attack and died, to the complete and utter confusion of Spider Man and the Fantastic Four. And they're actually kind of sad because they've known them for years. And um, yeah, so but the bulldozer, he's fine. Hmm. So. So he's like the big baddie dude. Oh, that's cool. I survived. You you have survived an encounter with the bulldozer. Um. Yeah. Uh, Dother doesn't look too good. <laughs> uh, oh God. Why? Okay. So um. I need to make a note of something, but I can do that later, I suppose. Um. Um, okay. All right, um, so you're, you're flying back to Earth. Uh, yes. of course you're, you're, damn, you're high up. You're, you know, a good, like, I think you're just 23. Yeah, you're only, you're, you've still got like 77 miles to go, so roll the 100. All right, keep flying down. Keep flying back to the center. Roll the 100. Um, 62. 62, okay. Um, and, uh, several minutes pass. Um, Kathleen, Kathleen is tending to Dother's wounds. Uh, I'm gonna actually see if she has any, like, healing abilities at all. Um, but, uh... Several minutes pass? I mean, I'd already be there several minutes pass. Hmm. Yeah, several minutes pass, and eventually you start arriving back to the planet's surface. And you have arrived back where you uh, you lifted off from. I land the ship. You land the ship. And it's like, okay, well, um, I guess thanks for, you know, help trying to help me contact Bahamut. It means a lot. Um, who the fuck was that guy? Was Oh, that was no a friend idea. of those scroll alien things you were talking about. Apparently, and I have no idea what he was or or what he was doing. Is is he a he too? He... Yes. Oh god. Oh, he hits like a Wayne. Shit. I don't recall you ever actually getting hurt by a Wayne. In fact, I was the one that got hurt by a Wayne. It's oh. semantics over here. Um yeah. Yes, semantics. I am bleeding back. profusely right now. I know, I'm sorry. I, I, I said. What can I do about that? Um, I mean, I could scorch the wound shut. That's the best I can do. Um, he He's fine, but he's got a nasty bruise. Since maybe he's got like a broken rib or two. Don't I recall this shit sort of like Med bay. You have not searched for a med bay. I have not searched for a med bay. Yeah. Um, you vaguely recall be... um, something about about that while looking through the manual. Um. Okay. Does the manual tell me where it's at? Yeah. There's the med bay is not very impressive though. It's it's actually it's very it's like one room and kind of small, and you sense it only has like maybe a first a couple first aid kits or something like that. Well, that's better than nothing, so let's take him there. Okay, you go to the med bay. What are you going to do? Um, we'll start reading to see what things are. You start doing what? Reading to see what things do. 
reading what? Like the different signs. Like this is that. This is that. This is where you find the band aids. Um, you basically the most you can tell is there's a closet and it's got first aid kits in it. Okay. Um, can I utilize anything to help patch him up? Make a search check. Forty-one. Forty-one. Okay. Yeah, you find some. You find some first aid kits. I I find first aid stuff. Cool. Uh. Ooh. Do I know how to? I don't know. Do you? Um. Do you have the modern D twenty skill of treat injury? I have heal. That usually deals with medicine. That that helps. Heal check. Oh, damn it. Make a heal. Um. Un. What? Twenty that is not natural. We have twenty that's not natural. All right, you can figure out how to use them. Cool. Start applying things for first aid to this guy. All right, hold on a minute. I need to find, like, you know, technology-appropriate gear. All right, well, we did, right at the bat, we have a first aid kit. Look at that. All right. More so armor gadgets. Soother pulse. God damn it. Alright, fuck it. Heal 78 damage. You find essentially a, 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 he, 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 you find essentially Boktopox, which essentially are, you, you find the, the essentially the equivalent of the first aid kit that you have is like these kind of little tubes that you inject into him and it secretes this kind of serum that patches up his wounds and you inject that into his body and he starts feeling better. And... Okay. And he's not completely healed, but he's back up to 184. It's like, ah! Feeling better. He's, he's still got a bruise, feet. but he looks better. Unfortunately, you have exhausted your entire ship supply of Bakhtapak. That's what you get for making me look up futuristic first aid kits. Spur of the moment, fucker. Okay, so... How dare you make me see, work? At least... Cleric. What? A cleric? Is healing him later? You could try. Of course, you've heard some bad things about clerics of late. What do you mean I've heard bad things about clerics? You've been hearing that clerics are losing their spells. Mm. Well, I mean, maybe we can talk to the druids. Okay. To find them. All right. Um, are you all ready to go back to town now? Okay. Um, I have my spellbook back. He hands you his spellbook. Cool. All right. So I cast, I, I spell my spellbook. I cast teleport for the last time to uh, take us back to the You're back aboard the bolt over his spaceship and he punches you in the head. No, okay. You're back in front of you're back in front of Collingrove. Cool. 
That's where I want to be. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Kathleen, you help Dother back into town. Take him back to where he, uh, his residence or his friends, whichever is appropriate. You go, are you going back to Duke Ned's place? Um, what time is it? Uh, well, after all this excitement, it's like about, you know, 10 o'clock at night. Let's go back to his lodging. Who's lodging? There's. What, Dother and Kathleen's? Yes. Uh, well, you know, I guess we would, but I mean, it's, it's kind of a little further, you know, it's, it's a little further away in town. And, uh, you know, basically, uh, Denora and John and Greg are going to wonder what's happening to us. Aren't your friends going to worry, too? Um... Like the okay, then we can go back and to the mean, mean spider lady. If that's what you want to do, then let's go. All right. You go back to Duke Neg's place, and immediately the guards start drawing their weapons against you. And okay, Lee's like, "Nah, it's 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 okay." He just he got drunk and decided to turn into a dragon. He's like, "Sir, could you please refrain from turning into a black dragon again in the city in the city limits?" What about turning into a a gold dragon. Uh, sir, we, we'd really appreciate you would not turn into a dragon randomly in the middle of the city. It causes a... You asked not to turn into a black dragon. So that means I can turn into she another... He says, dragon. yes, okay, drunkie, let's go back inside. They let you in. Okay. All right, and uh, cool. they go back inside, and um, meanwhile, um, Greg and John are on top of the table, and, and Duke Ned and everyone are singing, The Knob on the Wizard's Staff is Bright and Shiny. Ah, oh, the knob on the Wizard's Staff is bright and shiny. Animal's getting into it, and Lorala's, Lorala's even getting into it, and actually kind of singing with Denora, who is a filthy, disgusting half-elf. Um, and, you know, and, 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 and everybody's having a great time, and it's like, like yeah, the, Roll oh, over. Goody. Roll your leg over. Roll your leg over and fuck me till dawn. Roll your leg. And they, they're singing and having a great time. I uh I look over at door the d door Dorthan Dother? Dother and 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 Kath Kathleen? Kathleen. Kathleen I look at them and say, hey, at least you're not that drunk right now. I wish I was that drunk right now. But no, no, you got you got me to get you got my my boyfriend punched by an alien. Unintentionally punched by an alien. Very unintentionally. All right, uh Denora, Denora, no Denora, starts, Denora looks in, in the direction of, of the two of you. I mean looks in the only the way that a blind woman can. Uh, with her bandage over her eyes, like, oh, come on, come on and sing, sing, do the things, things are lighting up, and she punches him right in his wound. Like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Denora, um, blind bitch, damn it, it's like, I'm sorry, what do I do? Uh, uh, he's injured. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got into a, we got into a bar fight with a alien giant thing, and it's like, well, did you beat him up? We, 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 we kicked his ass. We kicked his ass. The animal's like, what did you fucking do now? What did you... Looking directly at you. He just knows. Did you destroy the Earth again? Did you do it? He destroyed the Earth Of course he destroyed the Earth again, Lorella says. And he always destroys it. He just really blows up everything. Blows up... You know, and something tells me he's really bad in bed. I don't know why. I just, I just you know... I feel like he is. I don't know. Why are you gonna be so rude? See, in Doctor Who, um, Amy Pond um, would cry because, like, she was mourning the loss of Rory, who had ceased to exist, 
but she couldn't remember why she was crying. She can't remember why she thinks you're in inadequate in the sack. She just doesn't know why, but she just senses that you're in inadequate in bed. Why you gotta be so rude? <laughs> Don't you know I'm human? Too? You're not human. You're human. You filthy. Vent. I was. I once was. <laughs> I once was a young warthog. You were a warthog. <laughs> you you were Bebop from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Shut up! I'm drunk out of sadness. <laughs> you you drink you drink your your sorrows, sorrows into into brandy and, and wine, and you're having a good time. Although you're also <laughs> upset, you you suddenly I'm gonna go back to Fire Nipple. He treats me like a person. Yeah, before you do, like, like the animal somehow talks you into singing karaoke, and you start singing, um, uh... He talks uh, me into tonight. staying. He, he, starts, he starts convincing you to sing Tonight We Are Young, My Fun, which somehow they have access to in a world where they don't know what that song is. Um, probably Give because a second, he has I that. need to get my story straight. My friends are in the bathroom getting higher than the Empire State. And, uh, probably because he heard it at the, uh, the podcast. They heard of the what? And the pocket dimension. Pocket dimension. Yes. He doesn't know why, but he just he likes that song now. Um. Can I go now, now he start he starts singing some nights, oh, yeah. which you miss, um, because <laughs> you're like fuck it, I'm going home. So, um, and, uh, all right. And Caitlyn, Caitlyn stops you before Caitlyn, who is now thoroughly plastered, stops you before you leave. He's like, okay, so we're gonna. This this tomb might help help me talk to Bahamut again and help everything. So you don't turn into a dragon. That's my job. My, I'm the dragon. I'm the dragon. I give the dragon blowjobs. <laughs> Ask about that. You don't turn into a dragon. Uh, don't question. get my boyfriend attacked by aliens and we'll help. And will the fighting hey, step? Hey, I got a few things for you. First off, the 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 alien thingy to fight with the aliens was an accident. That and it was true. That's true. I had no. I think the, um, wrong. That was kind of scary. Turning, <laughs> the turning into a dragon was intentional, but because because you're stupid. Still, I I know I know I get I and, I, um, I figured that out. You're dumb. You're dumb. Not, and, it's not and, uh, Kathleen. He's not. He's okay. He's he's all right. The alien was an accident. But God, God um, this guy was scary. You said dragon blowjob. What? You said Get dragon blowjob. She, yeah, she gives black dragon blowjob. She's really annoying. I wonder what that feels you like. You like my dragon blowjob? You like like like? I can't win here. I can't win this argument. I'm this. This is just every day. It's just you know. And then all of, a, all of a sudden, she she sobers up. It's like, don't touch my sword. It's like, no, it's like, touch, touch touch my sword. Fine. He touches the sword, and she and she activates the lightning on on her enhancement on it, and his hair frizzes out with the electricity. Like, ah! Yeah, it's like she kisses him on the cheek. This is a legitimate relationship happening, huh? This is a leg legitimate relationship. The, the, the Roman Caitlin and Dothar, Dothar is, is very beautiful and awesome, and one of the best things about the Wormwick Dungeon Dragon stream. Um, and it's weird because it's Chris Larios and Nick Freeman who are really good friends, but for some reason their D&D &D characters wind up like having a romance all the time, which is really super gay. It's really oh. super gay. So like Victor and Juliet and Death Clock, they almost got together too, and it's just really gay. But that's cool. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So, um, just to clarify real quick, the same place that this temple is, that's the same the, the place that I need to go for the, the Duke? No. To get paid? No? Well, you, you, you don't know. You recall seeing a castle. The Duke's talking about some kind of tomb. And you have not looked at the, the tomb at all. Okay. Well, um... We have our heading. I'm going to go back to, uh, to a place that I can go sleep. You place that you can what? So I can I can go, you know, rest. 
All right, you you go home. We're gonna hang with these guys. These guys are cool. These guys are cool. It's like let's let's let's. let's yeah, so they're they're gonna they're gonna like party with John and and uh, uh, Greg and and Denora's like let's go see Eli let's go let's go to the Church of Paylor. And all of a sudden, a bald man walks inside, getting off a horse, like in front of, in front of the castle. It's like, "Well, hello there." The bald man shows up. It is like, "Did I hear a pate was coming on?" Because Eli's already always down for a pate. I do believe. And this, this bald cleric of Paylor comes in and, and starts dancing and drinking. And they're like, Eli! He's like the norm. He's like the norm of from Friends. Hmm, okay. I'm done with this party. Okay. Well, it, not, not, not so, so the party is just beginning. The party is just beginning, sir. That's what, I may have lost my cleric powers, but... My power of party is is is, uh, is indubitably excellent. Does one of the religious faith always party like this? Uh, Paylor Paylor's light shines through all of us, and he shines that one must get completely naked, and and shake what his mama gave him all night long. Ooh, what a feeling dancing on the ceiling! It's an ancient text of Paylor. You wouldn't understand. Actually, I would, but I would need to read them. Well, I, I'm always happy to have a convo. You come, you come in, come into my church tomorrow at Sunday. Well, in two days from now, Sunday, because I, I, I do believe I will be hung, hung over tomorrow. And, uh, and you come in, and in the bright, shiny light of Paylor shine upon you, and it'll be, it'll be glorious. And you'll be, you, you, you can, you can hear my, my sermon on Dothas hair. Look at, look at Dothas hair. It's shiny. It's, it's beautiful. All of a sudden, like him and Denora start like, and and Kathleen start pawing Dothas hair. And then Lorala looks at him, looks at him, and in a drunken stupor, she begins to paw his hair. And then the animal paws his hair, and, it's like, and then Dothar's like, "I hate you all. I'm in very much pain right now." Is it, <laughs> feel his hair. Feel hey, you, you little, little person. Feel his hair. It, 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 it's like slicing a knife through cake. It is, it is beautiful hair. It's beautiful. He like stop. And this is whose right who's hair that they're pawing through again. Ah, uh, Dothar. Dothar has a magnificent mane, as as you can see, sir. Is a magnificent mane of, of golden lead, like Paylor itself. Uh, yet he he worships Corellin and his clown shoes religion. My game is just a massive rip off of someone else's game online. Anyway, so mm. uh, so they're they're pawing his hair. What are you gonna do? I'm just gonna walk away slowly. My gosh, this is far too silly. Far too silly. Stop that right away. All right, so they're all pawing his hair, and and you go home. Well, you at least you at least leave the party. I don't know if you actually go home. Go home. I, I'm gonna go to. Uh, well, home is impossible to reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of a shame, isn't it? Yeah. I go to Fire Nipple. If you go to Fire Nipple's place, you see Alistair is on all all, all hands and knees with uh, with a face mask on, scrubbing the ground and and wiping. Al Alistair. I finally, put him to bed. <laughs> Alistair. I hope you had a good time. Oh, you know. Drag guy out of a dinner party. The dragon threw him and his girlfriend over to Wait, the spaceship. What? Spaceship in the air. Did some meditating. Got into a fight with some guy named Bulldozer. Came back down here after escaping him. And uh, yeah, I got back to that party and everyone's drunk. You dragged a man outside, turned into a dragon, went to a spaceship. Met some guy named Bulldozer, and then went back to the party, and everybody was drunk. Yeah. Why did you drag a person out of the party? I, oh god. I thought it was the guy that said he killed a child with a dick. Some someone someone hits a child with a dick. That's that's monstrous. Let's kill him at once. 
I was going to take a very frightening flight by dragon, which I turned into. And then when I turned to the dragon, I looked down at who it was. I realized it was the wrong. So I turned it around. Party. I made allies. Um, but it doesn't actually. What'd you say? It doesn't affect me that much. Were you drinking someone's blood who was drinking at the party? Because from what I understand, that would affect your kind. I was not drinking blood at this party. Yes, you have no excuse, do you? Do you, Ox? No excuse whatsoever. I have no. So, well, maybe you shouldn't do something so impulsively. You know what? You're not the first person to say that today, and it's starting. It's almost like all of us are being voiced by the same asshole. I apologize. I just, I've been scrubbing shit for an hour or so. He was quiet for a minute, and then somehow he got the shits. I don't know what happened. Uh, since, I sense there's there's many, many souls that have given their lives cleaning up after this man's man's droppings. Okay. I hope... So, um... Is everything okay? What? Is everything okay, friend? Is everything okay what? Friend. Yeah, yeah, I just, I don't know. I would have liked to go to the party, too. But, uh... Go now. It was now, the right thing to do. Please. It was the right thing to do. Help a man in need. Go now while you... They have no interest. Okay, very well. I could use some fun. And he goes out, he flies, flies away. Cool. You hear upstairs, fire nipple is storing. Have I been sleeping at fire nipple? Yes. You've been staying here. I pull my coffin out. like that, And I lay down. All right, you go up to. He, I mean, he's got a tower. You have. You, there are rooms available, and you you pull out your coffin and you sleep. Yay. Endpoint. You done for the night? Auxentius needs sleep. So, so here's what the dungeon master was expecting. Which again, I don't know why. I was expecting it's like yes, Duke Ned. I'd be perfectly happy to go to this this adventure. And go to this this tomb, so the thing that the dungeon master has pulled up can can be ready, and we can have encounters and fights and stuff like that. But but no no no, Flutter Budgets doesn't do that. Flutter Budgets doesn't do that. Although Flutter Budgets, what he does do, is give us an excuse to hang out with the Wormwood characters again, which is awesome. Although I feel like I'm just just ripping off the works of someone else at some point, and I, I'm just a, I'm a terrible writer. I'm terrible. Garbage, garbage writer. Whatever, I had fun. I love the Wormwood game, and I'm glad we're doing a sort of kind of sequel. So, um, that's cool. Um, hey, guess what, though? Guess what? 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 Guess what? What? Guess what? What? At least I made some friends. You have made friends. Yeah, because the last time you met them, which unfortunately was not uh, a recorded session... Um, you, you left them in a very strange place. You, you just kind of tell, you were, your evil boss showed up, your horrible boss, if you will, Nathalahotep, just showed up out of nowhere in his ancient Egyptian garb and was all like, ah, oh, your friend's a tentacle monster. And he's, and, and, and kind of outed you and scared the crap out of these people and then whisked you away to go fuck everything up. And, um, so it was kind of nice to clear the air with the, the Wormwood characters. And, um... It was, it was, yeah, that was, that was fun. That was, that was a very, that was a talk. Oh, yeah, a very, in a very rash way. Of, but it was. Fun. That was a very role play heavy session, which was nice. We got to use the classic Wormwick characters from uh, Jason Pilara's channel from the Wormwick game, which was really cool. And uh, I, I got to reuse all their jokes like the hack that I am. And, um, and on top of that, we um we we had because you're you're a pain in the ass we had a fight with them 
And then I got to use one of my awesome encounters against you, which is Bulldozer of the Wrecking Crew from Marvel Comics. So, and um, I'm actually kind of surprised how powerful he is. Um, where, you know, this is what happens when you run off without the animal, because the animal probably would have killed him in, like, one hit or something like that. But, yeah, damn. It's like, I dealt, like, 100 damage to, like, fucking Dother. That's, like, wild. And, like, none of your spells worked, because they... I think you actually could have beaten his spell resistance, but you just didn't. And, um, and yeah, it's like, I, 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 Bulldozer's pretty dirty here. I, I'm going to, I'm going to break the, the cardinal rule of, of, of DMing right now. And I'm just going to read you his stats. His strength, his, his strength is 65, um, 75 when charging. Uh, his dexterity is 28. His constitution is 39. His intelligence is actually 25. His wisdom's 24. His charisma's 29. And his appearance is 28. I made a 59 on the Asvib. What's that? I made a 59 on the Asvib. Well, he was stupid, but maybe something happened to him where he's not stupid anymore. And he has 110 sanity. Maybe maybe something has happened to him that's caused a template to be slapped on him to make him super badass. Maybe that's happened. No. I don't know. You know, well, you know, you, you wouldn't think that because you're just a racist, Oxentius. You're just a racist and you're just... You're disapproving of people who have low ASVAB scores. Shame on you. Shame on you. I really don't. Okay. Um, but yes, so we have as a fun role play session. So tune in next time when uh, the, the when Flutterbudgets, the Animal, Lorala, Alistar, and the the the, the champions of Wormwick, uh, Alpha Team, Strike Force Team, Laser Protocol. Uh, Alpha Protocol, or also known as the Toothbrick Brigade, investigate a mysterious tomb. Will this, uh, the studying this tomb reveal what has happened to the world? Will they be able to restore all the cleric spells and the sorcerer spells? Will Flutterbreaders will return home, or are things just beginning? Is this the, is this just the beginning of the end? I should have a script before these things before I do stuff like this. Maybe, maybe you maybe can't. That. Script, you can't script the very end. That I, I, I can script whatever I want, sir. You can't anyway, script the end of the session. It, I, I will I will script it. I will script exactly what you're going to do, and then you just won't do it, and I'll, I'll get pissed off. And that'll be great. Sure, this isn't a video game. This isn't a linear video game. I, I suppose it is not. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, whatever. We're done for the day because Oxentius is tired and is wussing out on me. Uh, so this is, uh, is Oxentius signing out. And this is the Dread Pirate giving you a hearty ARG. Tune in next time. Farewell.